On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we talk about Mirror Cell by Greg Pucciato. Welcome to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. We're two professional broadcasters. We like metal and we like to talk about it. And today we're talking about an album that came out in 2022 <coughs> mm-hmm. by uh, former Gentleman Escape Plan vocalist Greg Pucciato. Almost exactly a year ago. Almost out, yeah. exactly one year a year. Yeah. And and uh, when I listened to this, uh, I was treated to exactly what I thought it was going to be. Uh, exact same music as Dillinger Escape Plan. Uh, in that not at all kind of yeah, way. Yeah, in, in the way that it's not at all the same <laughs> Nowhere near. whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a yeah. lot of like, I, I you know, this is, I, I read one headline. Uh-huh. Like I didn't really read into many reviews necessarily other than to just see like ratings. But uh, right. uh, one headline was like, it's it, it <clears throat> kind of a showcase of just Greg's love for music. Like, right. Everything that Greg loves about music, there's <laughs> something in here, right? Because every every time a, a new track would begin, uh, all the tracks, my, my I verbally said, "Wait, what? <laughs> What's this one going to be? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> uh, what, what genre is this one going to be? Yeah, there's right. a lot going on here. There's like some, you know, kind of uh, uh, recent era sort of cave in. Cave. That's my first thought. The first track, first, first song, is track. extremely cave. Right. I thought that's what I thought it was. Uh, I was like, I'm put my dishes down there is accidentally <laughs> listening to cave in here <laughs> accidentally put on some yeah. yeah uh there's some electronic stuff there's uh-huh. uh uh some some <laughs> very punk stuff uh-huh. there's there's a lot allison chainsy kind of stuff yeah there's there's kind of some some new metal uh groove metal grunge uh, grunge uh there's there's a little bit of everything and at on one here. point we took a trip back to 1983 and they're treated to a b-side of a lesser known depeche mode song yeah like there's <laughs> I figured, yeah. like, after listening to a bit of this album, I figured this would be something that you would be into. Yeah, I uh, actually dig it, yeah. Uh, because it's just just something about it. was like, this seems like a very OJ kind of album. Yeah. Uh, and I I also liked it quite a lot as well. And we'll, we'll talk more about it later on. First, how are, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing friend? fine. I'm doing very well. I'm, uh, I'm uh, getting ready to, uh, this time next week, well, is it Wednesday? Yeah. This time next week, I will be out of state. You so. will be in Las Wages. Las Wages. Uh, losing your wages. No, I... Not really. Not really. You're, you're not a gambler. I'm not I'm not a gambler. I, in fact, uh, of all the things to do in Las Vegas, that would be my least go-to thing. Yeah. I yeah. agree. Because I can't... I, I mean... Not not because, you know, I don't like gambling, per se, because I just don't like sitting at a table and watching repetitive shit yeah. for that long. I, I can't, I can't well, do it. You also partially do that for a living. Right. Yeah. But, sit at a table and watch people do that stuff. Uh, but I facilitate it. I, That's I'm true. In, you are in, involved in it. Right. Uh, you're, you're a bit more, a bit more involved in, in that for, for your other job. Yes, I work like. for a charity, but, uh, um, yeah, I, I definitely am. am with you there. Where I, I don't do Vegas. I don't do Vegas things in Vegas. Really? Mm-hmm. I, you see, I don't mind that. I don't mind going down during the stupid touristy shit. I want to yeah. go to Madame Tussauds. Yeah, I wanna, yeah. I want to go see uh, one of the damn, what are they called? The, the Cirque, Cirque du Soleil, Soleil shows. Yeah. yeah. Those are fun. Yeah. yeah well, I want to eat it at Dick's Last Resort. Yeah. <laughs> Dick's Last Resort. Have you never eaten at Dick's Last Resort? No, I haven't. Oh, shit. That's that's where you go and you sit down and they give you a paper hat with an insult on it. Oh, it's And they call you places. an asshole for okay. the entire meal. Yeah. yeah it's great. Um, <laughs> I have a picture of me sitting there with my ex-wife and my big, tall, papal-looking hat that yeah. says, even my hand rejects me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's yeah. good. I don't know. I don't know if I would enjoy that. I really, I really don't know if I would like that. You know, okay. I think, I think you actually would because uh, I, I know how you are. You're very careful about, you know, you know, accommodating people's feelings yeah. and whatnot. And when you sit down there, you, you don't have to fucking do any That's of that. True. <laughs> They're going to be rude to you. So. I, you know what the score is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you immediately know what the tone of the interaction is going to be. Uh-huh. 
So you don't have to. Yeah, I, I can see that. Right. I can see that being a thing. Also, I haven't been to uh, like all the times I've been to Vegas, mm-hmm. which there's another. I mean, you know, right. there's a week between like you're going to be there next week. Uh-huh. And then the week after that is when I'm going to be there. <laughs> right. Uh, although I don't think we'll miss an episode for that one because I'm leaving on Thursday and I'll be back. Uh, Got gotcha. you going for the weekend on Tuesday. I can't I can't remember. OK, uh, but um. In, in any case, like the for all the times that I've been to Las Vegas, I mm-hmm. have I've also not been to like Heart Attack Grill. Really? I, I have. I haven't been to Heart Attack Grill. I love the Heart Attack Grill. Uh, like I, I I'm going to have to try. I, I brought it up to the group I'm going with. Uh-huh. And maybe I'll have to bring it up again as like a hey, we could go and do this thing. But uh-huh. I it, I don't know if they would want to go and do that. But it would because because I mean. It's a lot. It is. It is a lot. And but I mean, the, the 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 payoff is that just about no matter what happens, like what happened to me when I was there this last time, I got to watch one of my closest friends and my wife at the time get a spanking with a paddle. Oh my god! Yeah. Why? Because if you don't finish your food, they paddle they, you. <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. There's corporal <laughs> punishment at this fucking place. I didn't know. That. I thought it was just you know, here's your your quintuple stack burger, you yeah. fat ass. Yeah. Exactly. Here uh, you go. And, and actually. If you go up and you tilt the scale at like 400 pounds, your meal is free. What the fuck? Yeah, the f- fatties eat free at the Heart Attack Grill. Oh, that. Uh, a place some- that has actually killed people. Yeah, something <laughs> about that doesn't quite sit well with me. <laughs> but. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a, it was a great time there. Bring you was the food good? Yeah, it was very good. That's okay. The, uh, yeah, I had a, as I had long a, as the food is actually good, I had a, not riding solely on the gimmick. <laughs> I, I had a triple chili cheeseburger. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it was really good. That's yeah, that's fucking insane. Which I mean, it's not different from what I had for dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean tonight I, I actually had a uh, taco dog. Mm. I, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a bratwurst on a bun, uh, smothered in taco meat. Where did you get that from? I made it myself. You made it. Okay. I had leftover taco meat and a leftover brat, and I'm like, I suppose that's that, what you do. That's two great tastes that taste great together, my friend. Why not? Uh, <laughs> last week or yeah. over the weekend, I can't remember. I ordered. Um, I had never, I had never uh, ordered anything from there before because um, I was, I haven't, and I haven't gone into there, which would probably have been better. Yeah. But um, uh, I ordered from Smash Factory. Oh, really? Uh, so, I mean, it was a good burger, but it was <laughs> like, like. Uh, I think both on the price point and ju- and and like the taste and the quality of it, uh-huh. both on, on both measurements to me, it was exactly the same as Five Guys. Like I, I actually like it better than Five Guys. I I, I do. I did also get you know a generic burger right. with you know with with bacon and onions and and, and lettuce and you got, and you got the factory burger yeah I, I got the, the factory, factory bacon burger, burger. Right. Uh, you know just it, a a standard uh-huh. regular ass cheeseburger so they probably do some some wackier stuff that is because like Five Guys mm-hmm. you don't really get very like strange with it it's I, just it's a burger <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you the the burgers it's I've had all the stuff because it's by my house yeah so um, because I'm lazy I go there yeah. to the places by my house uh, quite a bit and uh first of all i often get the wrong thing in the drive through okay uh, I, I want i generally want the the double bacon factory burger with cheese yeah that's what i want uh which is actually the best thing on the menu i'll, sure. I'll be honest with you and uh and then i'll open my bag and it'll be like soup or something oh, stupid what the i mean fuck? They, they, they fuck up my order about Constantly. seven out of ten times oh, that sucks uh it does but i mean I, it means I get to try stuff I didn't intend to try. There you go. Hey, silver lining. Silver lining. Glass half full. So, uh, yeah, but no, really, that is... You can try the other stuff. The tater tots are great. I did get the loaded tater tots. Th- those are good. Uh, I I think... like I liked the loaded tater tots. I probably could have done without the beans. I'm not really a beans person. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's bean, there's, sure. There was a lot There was a lot of beans in there. Uh, <laughs> just the regular... Just get tater tots right, with just yeah. the seasoning and then some ketchup, well, and they're fantastic. For whatever reason, when I ordered th- that burger... Because yeah. like I, I ordered the, like the double bacon burger, right. which, at least on DoorDash, there's no cheese on that one. Oh. And so, or like I was, I had put that in my cart and then I realized like, oh, there's no cheese on this. Mm-hmm. So I took it out of my cart and it had a side of regular tater tots. Uh-huh. But then when I went to the double bacon burger with cheese, uh-huh. tater tots didn't show up as a side. 
Really? I, I couldn't like find like like for like recommended sides. There were no tater tots on there. So I was just like, well, I'll, I was kind of interested in these loaded tater tots. So I'll just mm-hmm. put that on as a side anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seemed like like the tater tots themselves were, were pretty, pretty good. Yeah, they're uh, actually I don't know what they're doing to them or where they're getting them. But they're they like hold, yeah. like if they sit I me, mean, if you get too many tater tots, which uh, that's a blessing. Hey, but I mean, yeah, uh, then they'll sit on my couch for a An while. Embarrassment of tots. <laughs> That's uh, never mind. Anyway, so, <laughs> anyway, so I, uh, I'll be playing a video game or watching a thing. Oh, fuck, I got tater tots. And they'll still be crispy, hmm. even if they haven't stayed completely hot. I mean, how how like they don't go limp. Are the standard tots uh, like overly salty or are they? No, I mean, they're just the right flavor. Okay. They, they don't seem to over season them. Good. They're, they're just right. That is a problem that I because, I mean, I go to Sonic constantly and mm-hmm. it feels like they it feels like the amount of salt that they have mm-hmm. started putting on the tater tots has gone way up. They got salty tots. It, it seems like the, the tater tots have gotten saltier and saltier. And I'm not I'm not massive on salt when it comes to like like my potato uh-huh. stuff from mm-hmm. fast food. I like, like some. Well, sure, of course, absolutely yeah. like a little bit of salt, but like. Like McDonald's fries even are, are a little too salty for sure. me. I think I, I honestly my favorite fries are, are Wendy's fries. I'm uh, actually kind of with you on that one. Like everybody always says McDonald's has the best fries. I kind of I disagree. I think Wendy's has the best fries. Do, do you know Do you know why I feel like Wendy's has better fries? Why is that? Because if, when you're eating Wendy's fries uh, with your left hand. In your right hand, you're holding frosty. a goddamn frosty. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Let's deliver. we're we're putting these suckers together. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like I, I, I even what just of any other restaurant, uh-huh. uh, if the if it seems reasonable, mm-hmm. like like Culver's, I sure. will I will absolutely if I get like a milkshake at Culver's or, or a concrete or something, yeah, yeah, I will absolutely dip because they do those crinkle cut fries at they Culver's do. and those those Sturdy. really yeah. they grab onto that ice cream. They you do. can really scoop with that. So uh, this is like the most midwestern. <laughs> Like fat ass conversation <laughs> that we've had in a very long time. So you know when you're eating hot dish, what you're you got to do? <laughs> we're all we're just talking about fucking tater tots and Culvers. <laughs> but I got Culvers today entirely because earlier this week I could tell that you went to Culvers uh-huh. and ate it in the studio and then threw away some portion of it into the garbage in the studio uh-huh. because there. These the butter burger, even in the gar- even in a garbage, has such a distinctive buttery smell. Right. Uh, well, I think it was just the wrapper. Yeah. Was in the garbage. The, the wrapper. Like whatever whatever remains there were. I always know when you have had Culver's at work because <laughs> I can smell it. And all week I've been like, fuck, I want to go to fucking Culver's. <laughs> and this today I, I caved and, yeah. and went to Culver's and got a burger and some curds. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you got a burger and some curds it's there. A burger and some cheese curds. Oh, oof, that. that's some, uh, uh, a butter burger and some cheese curds at Culver's. You know, <laughs> uh, they take the some chunks of cheese and then you put them in the batter and then you throw them in the deep fryer. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, it's good stuff. Um, <laughs> oh god, uh, I, right. I I've brought this up to you before, but I love whenever I'm like I'm listening or watching something. Mm-hmm. And you can tell, like, if it's if it's like a podcast or something, sure. And you can tell, uh, like the the litmus, my litmus test for like how midwestern is a person, right? Is like certain reference points that they will bring up mm-hmm. because I think there is just something about midwesterners where like we we kind of have to be like, well, in the Midwest we have this, right? It's like they will bring up Culvers, sure, and they will bring up the real one for me is they will bring up Menards. Oh, of course. And when they yeah. bring up Menards, they have to sing the jingle. Save big money at Menards. Ooh, that was a very dissonant uh, version. There. <laughs> it was extremely dissonant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and if if you're listening and you have no idea what Menards is, uh-huh. we're not talking about our testicles. Uh, well, we are. We are. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a. It's like a a uh-huh. uh, home supply store, a home improvement type of store. It's it's like a. It's like Home Depot. Home or, Depot or Lowe's. Um, yeah. But they have a bit more stuff. Right. Uh, like you they have can, all the stuff. Yeah. They like they they actually have like a small grocery section. They do. A um, decent grocery section. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, actually. Uh-huh. Uh, and a clothing have, section. Yeah, they have yeah. a clothing section. Uh-huh. Um, I bought these shorts there. I think. I th- was it these shorts? No, it wasn't these shorts. I have two pairs of jeans. I think that I uh-huh. that I bought at 
No, no, no. Those jeans that I have are from Target, aren't they? Anyway, um, I, I have two pairs of shorts and two flannels. But uh, yeah, they like they have Menards. clothing there. Mm-hmm. Um, they, all the hardware and they all yeah, lumber. They yeah. have a very uh, and they have like a. This has just become an advertisement for Menards. <laughs> Uh, like they yeah. have a really good like uh, bathroom fixtures section yeah and light bulbs great too. yeah um, and paint and garden area and- but yeah they uh, uh, it's it's that kind of store mm-hmm. and it's a very like it's it's localized entirely to the Midwest right. both like you know classical Midwest Ohio Illinois Indiana so on if you're uh, fixing remodeling or doing anything in your home it requires like eight trips to Menards exactly that's what's gonna happen you're gonna get and you're gonna go oh damn it uh, gotta I, go I, back to Menards honestly I think the presence of Menards uh-huh. I think that is the true <laughs> definition of uh-huh. what is the Midwest to me like there right. like people always get into a debate about like like you know is North Dakota a part of the Midwest I'm like we have Menards we, <laughs> We have we have Menards. Uh, it's a funny name. Please don't kick me in Menards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if you if your state or your city or whatever, if uh-huh. it has a Menards, you're in the Midwest. Right. Uh, and when I was a teenager, we didn't have one here. So we became a part of the Midwest. Right. Well, we had one in Bismarck. That's true. So so it was me and my, my buddies, right? Hey, we're gonna put a, a we're gonna put a door on the side of the garage. So uh I'm gonna drive down to Bismarck. I'm gonna drive 120 miles. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> go get a door and some hinges. Yeah. Uh, and probably some Twizzlers and a gallon of milk and uh, all at the same place. <laughs> gonna get a lawn chair and a snow blower. It is convenient. Yeah. I, some of the shelves in my uh-huh. uh, kitchen that I have D and D shit stacked on mm-hmm. uh, is I got that at Menards mm-hmm. uh, because for whatever reason, like like. I looked I looked all over town for like shelves to use for D&D shit and I couldn't find them anywhere mm-hmm. at anywhere close to a reasonable price. Right. Uh and Menards is the only place. That <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, just keep, it's it a just commercial keep, just yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Well and also we keep on saying Menards, Menards. which is funny. <laughs> right. Um yeah. But yeah, it's an extremely Midwestern thing. It is. It's like Culver's. Right. It's it, it's it, Culver's for restaurants, Menards for like stores, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, like uh, cultural food. If you eat tater tot hot dish. Well, of course. Uh, which, I mean, that's our that's our baseball mascot. Yeah, that's our. Ba- and his name the is Tate. Tots. His name is T- yeah, Tate R. Tot. Tate R. Tot. Which, by the way, the first few times I heard Jeff. Talk about Tate at the International Bank uh, remote. remote, remote. I'm anyway. like, did they fucking seriously name him Taint? What the? <laughs> <laughs> yes, his name is Taint. Taint? Sometimes they call him Grundle. <laughs> or Perineum. So, <laughs> his, his proper yeah. name is Perineum. His right. nickname is Taint. Right, and, and our, our local baseball team is called the Hot Tots. <laughs> which sounds like one of those really creepy beauty pageants for kids. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's... I honestly, I'm so desensitized to the name to the name of that team at uh-huh. this point that right. like it's it's not it, the the novelty of how stupid it sounds <laughs> has has worn off. And we voted on that shit as a community. Yeah. There was a list, and I'm like, that would be there's no fucking that way. That would be so fucking funny. Yeah, if that got hap- that'll never happen. No, People vote for that, and they did. They did. <laughs> uh, like one of the other options was like Berserkers, which yeah. would make sense because. We're the city. This city is the host to the largest Scandinavian heritage festival yeah. on the North American continent. Mm-hmm. Uh, or the Dak Rats. Like it would. Yeah. yeah. The Dak Rats also would have made sense because yeah. it's an Air Force thing. It's an, it's an Air Force thing. And it's it's also an animal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, like, like the prairie dogs where I'm calling Dak. Well, it's not really a prairie dog. I had never heard it. I had never heard that term, at least for an animal. Really? Anyway, I had not. No. Yeah. Uh, I I just knew it was like an Air Force nickname thing right. for people that that got sent up to here. Dak rats. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've heard people going out in the backyard. Hey, Dak rats are chewing up the yard. Got to go out with a twenty-two and shoot them. I I don't know. I guess for me it was always golfers. Sure, golfers. The fucking golfers are back. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who that's an impression of. It's not an impression of my dad. <laughs> no. He doesn't sound like that. No, he doesn't. Um, but. Uh, 
yeah uh midwestern shit this has been this has been the midwestern section of the podcast the whole the whole podcast is say big money at Menards. <laughs> oh god all right uh what have i been up to i've been playing more bloodborne sure uh, how far have we gotten uh pretty far i think um i've gotten to the point of the game where uh the you know the it has it has been revealed that uh-huh. the you know the the twist of like oh uh there's eldritch monstrosities everywhere that have been watching you is sure I, I killed rom the vacuous spider mm-hmm. uh and i've just been kind of, i've been kind of trying to figure out where i want to go next because like every place mm-hmm. um that sort of opens up to you after that uh all feel like kind of a pretty significant jump in difficulty really like like it's it seems like a you you like a a not strictly linear uh uh bump up in difficulty Mm -hmm. um so i've just been kind of feeling out each area trying to figure out which one i want to do because you can go to canehurst you can go to yahargul uh, or you can do the nightmare frontier, which is fairly small. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just don't know quite what I want to do next, which one I want to do first. Um, uh-huh. and then there's the DLCs, which I actually don't know how to access. Um, uh, cause this was, this was the, uh, the point in their game design philosophy where, uh, from soft hadn't quite, uh figured out that like hey maybe we should make this easily accessible like mm-hmm. like the the way that you access the dlc for dark souls one mm-hmm. is so fucking bizarre <laughs> it's like people yeah. paid money for this and they don't know how to get to it uh, you need to look up how to get to it if really? you want like so the way to access uh artorius of the abyss mm-hmm. is uh, I, I I believe I'm remembering this correctly. Yeah, you need to go to um, the uh, there. There is like a big library. I think it's called like the Duke's Archives. Mm-hmm. I believe is what it's called. Uh, towards the beginning of that area, there will be a crystal golem who is looking at like a gyroscope or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. You have to kill that crystal golem, and he's got a little amulet that you can pick up, mm-hmm. and then you have to go down to Dark Root Basin which is extremely far away mm-hmm. uh, from there. You have to go down to Darkroot Basin, uh, kill the Hydra, then you have to reload the area, sure. and then walk all the way down to the end of this like watery canyon that the Hydra was in front of. Mm-hmm. And there is a golden... Uh, there is a, a, a golden um, uh, crystal golem that mm-hmm. you need to kill. And when you kill that golden crystal golem, a fucking princess pops out and you talk to her uh-huh. and she's like, Oh, hello, I'm Princess Dusk from Ulysseel. You remind me of uh, Sir Artorius. Thank you for releasing me. I'm from the past. Or some weird bullshit like that. But then it turns out your princess is in another, another castle. castle. Yeah. Right. Uh, but then, So then you have to reload the area again. And then when you go back, you ha- you have to go back to where the princess popped out of the goal. I mean, she's not there anymore, but now there's a weird purple vortex. You got to go up and touch the purple vortex and a big hand c- comes out of it and drags you uh, into the past. It drags you back into the past like 200 years to this place called Ulysseel. And that's the DLC. And that's how you access the DLC instead of, you know, like fucking anything else (laughs) right it's so bizarre Uh and convoluted which look it's dark souls like sure what did you what what were you gonna expect like like it is it seems like the most from soft shit possible of, of like to make this that convoluted and uh, by comparison, like mm-hmm. accessing the DLCs for Dark Souls Three is really easy. Mm-hmm. Like, like they put the uh, the character. Uh, there's a character that you need to talk to to access the first one, mm-hmm. and he is in a very obvious spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably like a third of the way through the game, uh, it's very hard to miss him, and he will be sitting there, like kneeling in front of this altar. And uh-huh. when you go and talk to him. 
that will immediately start the DLC. Okay. Uh, and you get dragged into this other area that you can leave pretty mm-hmm. much immediately. But um, so like, or it, it's easy to like, oh, I know where I can go to do that when I'm ready to do that because okay. those DLCs are very hard. And then the end of that DLC leads directly into the beginning of the next one. Okay. Or you can access uh, the last one from a bonfire uh, right at the very end of the game okay. if you want to as well. But like, like that's easy compared to Dark Souls 1. She's like, what the fuck? How mm-hmm. did you think this was a good idea? Why did you do it this way? Um, well, how does this make any sense? <laughs> but uh mm-hmm. yeah so I, I don't know how uh, i i know it, it has something to do with amygdala uh you I, I think get grabbed by one and it puts you in the hunter's nightmare or something like that i i don't know uh there's so much like <laughs> crazy lovecraftian bullshit <laughs> in that game that i'm just like sure that makes sense uh-huh. whatever uh uh the hunter's nightmare yeah well because you have the hunter's dream right and then there's the hunter's nightmare, right? Uh, and all of that shit. It's I I'm I'm really enjoying it. There there is one thing I thought was weird, which like in all one of thing. my <laughs> in weird even in the context of the game, mm-hmm. which is uh, like in all of my time, you know, appreciating Bloodborne from afar, mm-hmm. and like I didn't know a ton about I didn't know a ton of like mechanical information about how to beat the bosses or anything, but I have mm-hmm. a pretty good idea of like what the story is about and certain characters, certain characters are and that sort of thing. And like mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. places are and what those places mean. Mm-hmm. And there's Bergenworth College, which is where like all of the 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 research into the, you know, the eldritch gods was being done. And I assumed that when you go there, it's like this massive, huge labyrinthine, you know, Victorian college. Sure. Uh, no, it's it's like a, a, a yard in like one building. It's really small. Right. It's it's incredibly small. And I was like, this is mm-hmm. this is it. There's not any more. Mm-hmm. There is a place in the nightmare frontier called the lecture hall that like you get dragged to when patches tricks you. Um, and that has like a couple more rooms, but that's it. I don't know where it was meant to be because I think it, it was like a physical place that got pulled into like an, a nightmare dimension. But I don't know where that was meant to be in the real world. But really? the 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 Bergenworth College in the real world as it stands is really small. It's bizarrely <laughs> small. Um, it, like I was expecting some huge like Oxford type, you know, uh, campus. Uh-huh. But no, uh, it was like one building with uh, a, you know, a, a dome on it and a couple of floors and some couches and a bunch of bookshelves. Do you know who uh, um, P- PDQ Bach is, no. a.k.a. Peter Shickley? I don't. He's a sort of comedy composer. He's been around for a few decades. Okay. Uh, but he purportedly uh, teaches music at the University of Southern North Dakota at Hoople. Okay. And I love that there was a book, a picture book he put out of, of his life and whatnot. And he had uh, pictures of the campus uh, there at Hoople, North Dakota, uh-huh. the University of Southern North Dakota. Uh-huh. Uh, and he says, okay, this is the music department, clearly a barn. And uh, <laughs> and then he says, here's the science department, uh, clearly a different angled photo of the same barn. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. And then the whole page is like that. It's pretty funny. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are these really annoying uh, bug bug man monsters uh-huh. that that are that roam around the the college there uh that are annoying to fight but um yeah that's th- that that's one thing i thought was was a little weird about about bloodborne something that i wasn't expecting uh-huh. based on everything that i knew about the lore and how important that place was to the lore of bloodborne it's a building <laughs> it's like, yeah it's it's one building it's a <laughs> relatively large building uh-huh. but when you go inside it it's like mostly just open space on right. the inside uh and there's like two floors and then an attic and it's yeah it just seemed a little weirdly underwhelming (laughs) um like maybe there was supposed to be more to it that ended up having to be cut i don't know um 
I'm almost like I'm kind of curious how how big uh, that new Armored Core game is going to be. Mm. Just because, like, I know uh, FromSoft at this point is not some plucky little indie developer, right? But it's like you know they've they had so many people working on Elden Ring and continuing to work on Elden Ring. Right. The deal, the, when does the DLC come out? I don't even. I, I'm I I'm not sure. Um, mm-hmm. But like. To my understanding, it's going to be fucking massive. Really, the DLC is going to be massive. I, as I understand, anyway. Cause, well, I would hope it's really big because, I mean, I it's, mean, Elden Ring's a small game. It's yeah, quick, it's a quick two-hour run through. Yeah, yeah. but like, I, I would hope it would be a, a fairly big game because it's been well over a year since the game came out. Right. Uh, and it's I, I don't think the DLC is coming for a while. It's definitely mm-hmm. not coming until after Armored Core comes out. <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know, how how in depth is Armored and, and Armored Core is like a different style of game. Like uh-huh. it's it's not it's not Elden Ring, but you're in a big robot. It's you know, they, mm-hmm. they have a very different mission structure. Right. Um, it's a lot more linear in terms of story. Like the the levels themselves are big and open and you can navigate them how you want. Mm-hmm. But it's like, OK, here's this mission. This mission takes place in this level. Uh, here's your robot. Have fun. Um, so maybe it's a slightly different, a slightly easier sort of game to develop. I don't know. That reminds me. I was recently revisiting Elden Ring again. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, have you ever left? I mean, I've left. I've played other games. But <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, and I, anyway, I, I went back to like Limgrave, and I'm like, is there anything here I missed? I could. I've got. I've got everything here. I mean, I've. I've. Uh, oh, I never beat the Crucible Knight. Which one? The one in the that's in Limgrave. The one that's in the the Everjail. Oh, that guy. Okay. Yeah. The captain. Yeah. That's not what he's called. But uh, <laughs> I've there's like a really poorly drawn uh, comic about like there. It, it seems to be a thing, especially in from soft mm-hmm. games where, mm-hmm. you know, you c- come up against a boss and it'll be like Ultra Lord, the fucking destroyer of gods. Yeah. And it'll be, you know, you fight that and it's like, oh, that wasn't so bad. That's that's about what I expected. Mm-hmm. But then when a character is just called like the captain, it's like, <laughs> oh, God, I'm about to get my ass yeah. beat over yeah. and over again. Yeah. If, if they're 10 stories tall, you know, it's like you kind of plow through them fairly yeah, easy. It's you know? OK. But then the, the, they're the, human size. <laughs> fucking worry. You're a gunner. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, and I think that Crucible Knight was the captain for a lot of people for mm-hmm. the for the first part of the game. Crucible Knights in general are one of those things where it's like they're either really easy for you or mm-hmm. they're extremely tough. If you know how to parry, they are uh, extremely laughable. Yeah. Because uh, all of their attacks basically can be parried. Um, <laughs> But uh, well, I mean, they don't have a lot of attacks. Yeah. Once you've learned them, it's like, well, I know. I know now. Yeah. And if you have, you know, some really damaging uh, right. like weapon arts and whatnot. Then, right. If you're using then, bloody slash, bloody slash. Or you've got moon veil or something like that. Like I've got I've got moon veil, but I, I hadn't leveled up my intelligence enough to use it. Ah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's uh, uh, like I, th- I think the the biggest uh, offender in the like the whole FromSoft franchise of like human sized enemies mm-hmm. are always the most dangerous is is probably Sister Freda from Dark Souls Three. <laughs> she is I think slightly larger than the player character, but mm-hmm. Jesus fucking Christ, I hate her so much. I'm and I'm it's <laughs> got me terrified for Bloodborne because she's heavily based on Lady Maria. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ave she, Maria. Yeah. And Lady Maria is the second to last boss of the DLC and is supposedly extremely difficult. That whole DLC is just like extremely difficult boss one after another, although one of them is optional. So I, I that's uh Lawrence, mm-hmm. I think. Larry. Larry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who I, I, I'll, I'll attempt. Mm-hmm. I'll attempt. I haven't, there's, I don't know if I've encountered any optional, but bo- well, the cleric beast technically is an optional boss. Uh, um, cause you can, yeah, you can just go straight past the cleric beast and go straight to father gas coin. Like the cleric. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Cause the cleric beasts whole, like that whole bridge doesn't lead anywhere. Right. Yeah, but you uh, but, but you have to kind of have to beat the cleric beast if you want to level up at all. No, you don't. Don't you? You don't even have. Yeah. 
you can go straight eat like i've told i've told you this before all you have to do is look at a boss oh right. and you get an insight and then you can level up right and then the doll comes to life but you right. have to you can't do the thing you've been doing in elden ring for over a year which is never fight any bosses <laughs> You have to go and fight the bosses. Well, no, I did. I went back. I told you I went back and I, I started fighting bosses, right? And yes. It was, and it, and it, was, it just, was laughable because you're level 8 billion because you've done everything else in the game. Right. <laughs> Still, I just do. I don't understand how you play these games. <laughs> I, I don't get it. I went in, <laughs> like, I've been playing the game many, many hours. So I'm like, you know, I should fight. Uh, I should fight Margaret. So I, <laughs> so I went, I went and uh, yeah, it t- took the me like f- four hits. And the <laughs> first time you can't out DPS a boss <laughs> is going to be, I feel like, a wake up call for you because you have you haven't had to learn how to play the game. <laughs> it's just every other boss. You've just been like, oh, I did eight trillion damage to him right. uh, before he could hit me and he died. I'm I didn't still- need to learn any of his moves. I, no, I still I'm still learning the moves. Also, I'm naked. Basically, I'm, of course. Yeah, so I'm I'm light rolling all the way through it. But I mean, that is one of the things. One of the yeah. nice things about Bloodborne that's nice is that you don't have to worry really about equipment. Mm-hmm. Like your like like clothing is all kind of vaguely the same. Some of them have slightly higher resistances than others, but generally it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, there's no there's no weight system. Your your dodging and rolling is always the same. Right. Uh, you don't you don't have to worry about and your jumping is always the same yeah so that's that's nice and that's been nice in bloodborne not have to mm-hmm. not have to deal with that shit um so greg pucciato greg pucciato <laughs> yeah. speaking of shit <laughs> well, he's not no, shit no uh, but, but he did famously take a shit one time yeah at a uh, festival in in England. a bag and then throw yeah. it at people Right in the uh, audience, a, a classic um, a Gigi Allen type of moment. <laughs> what what statement was he trying to make? Um, Do we he know? Was say, uh, he was when he threw when he presented the bag. He said, "This is." Uh-huh. Uh, I'm paraphrasing heavily, but if if I remember correctly, it was like, "This is the the type of stuff you're going to hear for the rest of the day." Because <laughs> you know the other bands at the festival were like Avenged uh-huh. Sevenfold and and <laughs> sure. that sort of thing. Like, it's all shit. Uh, which, you know, I mean, compared to like the Dillinger escape plan, making the fucking most insane shit you've ever heard. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, I won't say that the other music is bad, but like Dillinger maybe had, had a little bit more artistic value, uh, from cer- from, from a certain point of view. I forgot what happened to their original singer. What? Um, he just, he just moved on. He's he moved just, on? uh, uh, had something else that he went and did. Uh, and I think he's a graphic designer. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe, uh, Dimitri, uh, Minikakis or something like something that. Like that yeah. Um, I do know he came back for, for some of their last shows, hmm. uh, and performed with them. Um, but, uh, yeah. So Greg Pucciato, if you don't know who he is, uh, former vocalist of, uh, the Dillinger escape plan, mm-hmm. uh, from about, I think 2003 until they, uh, went on what is essentially permanent hiatus. Right. Uh, they didn't really, they didn't really break up. That's not how they phrased it, but they were just like, we're going to stop amazing making music maybe forever. Right. Uh, you know, you, you might hear from us again sometime in the future, but don't expect mm-hmm. it. Um, and so he's, uh, pursued a number of other projects. He has a electronic music project called right. the black queen. Um, there's a Killer super group. Yeah. Yes. A super group he's been involved in called killer be killed. Um, with who's all, who was all in that? Troy, That's, um, uh, I want to say Troy Baker. No, no. no. Troy. Um, uh, oh my God. Uh, Sanders. From Troy yeah, Sanders. Sanders from Mastodon on bass, uh, Ben Caller. And uh, uh, Max Cavalera, isn't yeah, it? Max Cavalera, yeah. on on guitar, Ben Kohler from Converge on drums, right? Um, yeah, that, that like they've made some really cool stuff. Yeah, I haven't listened great. to the Black Queen because mm-hmm. um, electronic music just isn't it isn't quite my thing. Mm-hmm. But um, this album kept on coming up on my Spotify. I recommended, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, well, I'll, I'll check it out. This is his second his uh, second full length solo album, right? Uh, bearing his name came out almost a year ago mm-hmm. uh, and yeah it's a variety of different genres like mm-hmm. we said at the opening of the episode uh, there's you know some some kind of uh, hard like metallic hardcore type stuff nothing is you know anywhere near the level of 
musical insanity and <laughs> sonic terrorism the shall EP, we say right? of of dillinger but um you know some some of those like metal infused hardcore influences in mm-hmm. a variety of different forms right. coming through uh you know through on places throughout the album um some heavy like uh here and there kind of like gothic music in like goth music influence mm-hmm. here and there uh like you had mentioned grunge. and grunge as well definitely there's there's quite a bit of grunge on this mm-hmm. uh in certain songs but he really didn't seem to feel any real need to constrain himself to any one style right um i've heard some uh some read some talk uh read some talk i've i've, I've read some people saying that uh this was a lot more cohesive than his first album really his his first solo album was him just kind of like throwing whatever at the wall mm. um and that or this the is, audience <laughs> or the <laughs> audience and right. that this was maybe a a, a bit more a bit more cohesive, but uh, uh, I, I, that really makes me wonder just yeah, what that me, first album sounds right, like. I want to give it a listen um, because, and and everyone says like <laughs> it's more cohesive in in a way that uh, is an improvement. Sure, um, a bit more a bit more focused. Um, I would say Greg's vocals are definitely the star of the show. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, I don't think is any real surprise, you know, when you're getting a a solo album from someone who is best known for doing their vocals. But I don't think the instrumentation is anything to uh, be disregarded. Right. Um, I would say I think this album would really benefit with slightly cleaner production on on the guitars the sure. guitars felt a, a little muddy to me at times okay yeah. um but i think like on a lot of the songs the tone is really good it's mm-hmm. just something about the production was not quite as clear as maybe it could have been um would have gotten a little bit more out of that but i think the guitar tone was really good yeah i mean uh, it was different it was like different on every song just yeah. about yeah yeah uh, it was it was different, but consistently uh, right. quality, mm-hmm. I think. And I think the songwriting is is good as well. Mm-hmm. Like uh, to my understanding, this is all his, you know, every, every little bit is Greg ever. All the songwriting, everything is Greg. Like which I he think plays is, the guitar. And I don't know if he plays the guitar. Um, I, I feel like he I mean, he played a little bit in Dillinger, didn't he? I, mean, I think so. I think on occasion usually? he might have picked up a guitar. Right. Um, most of the time he was too busy climbing up the, the fucking sides of the stage and jumping 40 <laughs> feet into the crowd. Sure. Like I, the, the number of bones each member of that band had broken throughout their career <laughs> mm-hmm. is remarkable. Mm-hmm. The number of injuries each of them had sustained doing just the wildest shit all the time. Right. <laughs> like our music is fucking insane. So I guess we need to act like total <laughs> maniacs too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I always got the vibe that those concerts were fucking dangerous. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know if he plays on this. I, I guess I should have I should have uh, looked at that and, and done some reading to see if uh, to see if he if he played all the instruments right. on this. I wouldn't be terribly surprised if he did. Mm-hmm. Um, he he seems like someone who is is capable uh, of of doing that sort of thing, so I'm I'm not entirely sure if that's uh, that's how he handled it mm-hmm. or not. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff going on. There's there's a couple songs that are like straight up more electronic uh, pieces with you know less uh, very little rock elements to speak of on some mm-hmm. of the songs. Um, but uh, like yeah, we is that song? Yeah, yep. the, yeah. Uh, what what are your uh, do you have any any sort of thoughts that you that you want to share or want to get out about this album? Um, like I said, I um, I, I hear different influences of course in, in every song but i mean they seem to be very clear influences yes like like that first track uh um reality spiral definitely sounds like cave in uh or as uh, in this hell you find your oh yeah in this that's, hell you find yourself the, is only a minute 26 isn't right it? that's this the that's the opening sort of track yeah yeah, of, yeah, but yeah, yeah uh but yeah uh, and then uh, no more lives to go really sounds a lot like alice in chains to me yeah very very grungy uh, never wanted that. I, is I a, really like that song. Never wanted that is very good. Yeah. Uh, I re- uh, lowered was the first was the single that I remember hearing uh, like a year and a half ago uh, with Reba Myers. With Reba Myers from yeah. Code Orange. Right. Uh, yeah, and it's it sounds like just like uh, dark pop is yeah. what it sounds like. Yeah. 
And I really dig it. It's very, it's a very catchy song. It sounds like it could, it could play on the radio. I mean, yes. I like the song. Yeah, I really like it as well. Yeah. Uh, then there's We, which is more electronic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we get into the last three songs. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. <laughs> All three of these last three songs are uh-huh. so intent. Like, th- really on the last three, he mm-hmm. kind of starts channeling that, that sort of intensity and... Um, kind of unhinged sort of quality that always made him such a kind of terrifying part of Dillinger. I I, I do have to say, I mean, we you were going to ask, you know, uh, what's your favorite what's track? Your favorite, yeah, what's your favorite track? That, I think I Eclipse is probably that track yeah, for me. I, I really... I I just wrote all th- the last three songs. Yeah. I can't, I can't pick. Mm-hmm. I can't pick between I Eclipse, Rainbows Underground, and... and all waves, all waves to nothing is really that song that hammers in the like the that sort of unhinged kind of quality right. in the first half. Anyway, it's mm-hmm. there's two extremely different halves to right. all waves. <laughs> it's to almost nothing. two songs. It's it's yeah. almost two songs. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I I loved the melody and the the uh, just the the mm-hmm. songwriting on those last three songs. All three of them are are a bit longer. Mm-hmm. Um, I yeah, I just I loved. I loved all three of them. I thought they were really, really good. Right. Um, this uh, album came out to about a seventy-nine point one out of six reviews that uh, respectable that I uh, put together. It seemed pretty respectable. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess I didn't ask. I think it's clear, you know, how we feel about it. But does this album slap? Yeah. Yeah. This album definitely slaps. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would agree. So I would. I would say so. So I guess the the other question that I have to ask is, what metal would you bestow upon this album, like Maz Kanata to Chewbacca? <sighs> I, I I think it gets a gold. I gotta I, I gotta agree with like I didn't I didn't write it I didn't write down uh-huh. ahead of time what I wanted to give this because I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I don't. And I, I wanted to talk it out with you, and I think it's got to be a gold for me too. Yeah, I mean it's it's one of those things where uh, I I didn't quite completely taste it while I was eating it, you know. Yeah, and then yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you know you're on the you're on the bus home from that sub shop and you, and you burp a little and you go. You know that was a fucking good sandwich. That was fucking great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I really like. I I my first in impulse, which uh-huh. I think was correct, is it was to write down gold, and I right. was like, I want to think about this a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think that first impulse was 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 correct. Yeah. Because uh, uh, I got done, and when I actually started thinking about, it, I was like, I really dig this. I really like this album. Right. So, uh, yeah, this one gets a gold for sure. Uh, that would be Mirror Cell by Greg Pucciato. So. His sophomore effort. Sophomore. Yeah. A 510 sophomore. <laughs> um, basketball announcing yes. reference. Very. Ex- we're narrow casting with that one. Exactly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, what uh, What do you want to talk about next week, buddy? Well, next week, like I say, I won't be here. That's true. I won't be yes. in town. Unless you want to, you could do it like probably Thursday night if you want. I'm, I'm down with that. Uh, I mean, if you. If, I will have spent a week with my to. girlfriend. Uh, if you would please, <laughs> please invite me over. Sure. We can hang out and do a podcast. We can record on Thursday night. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I would like to talk about an album that we should have talked about fucking three years ago because okay. <clears throat> I gave it a, a, a fresh listen on the way back from the Badlands. Okay. This last week, and I don't know why I haven't been, I haven't been listening to uh, "Empire of the Blind" by Heathen more often. Okay, "Empire of the Blind" by Heathen. Have they, have they broken out of their thrash metal bubble that they've been in for forty years? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Have they honed it to a fucking fine point? Yes. All right. Well, we'll talk about that then yeah. next week. Empire of the Blind by Heaven. I don't know why. Don't know what's going way. on there? <laughs> uh, so until uh, we talk to you next Thursday, uh-huh. why don't you go ahead and follow our pages on social media, on Twitter and Facebook. Otherwise, just subscribe to our feed on whatever it is you are using to listen to us right now Mm -hmm. so until next time thank you very much for listening to another episode of the Browns Medalist Podcast I'm Kale I'm OJ congratulations congratulations